Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a pretty interesting piece of tech to take apart. This is actually a management computer from a substation. The first thing we can see here is this really thick uh, copper grounding strap uh, that goes to the box here to ground it. You can see here we have a service tag from Consumers Energy the date of January 2004. Alright, and it opens up like this, and it reveals a very nice control panel. Okay, here's a closer look at the control panel. You see here we have a nice LCD. This whole unit is called a step voltage regulator control. We have different uh, groups of things you can change here. Voltage reduction, system data, control set points, neutral indicator, power supply fuses. We have an operation counter. Looks like on this panel you can set up control set points, at voltage level, bandwidth, time delay. button on and off switch we have the system data panel which I believe you can control what the display over here shows we have a switch two more buttons okay so this whole um, control assembly here is on a hinge and we can Pull it up by unscrewing the screw here and pulling it up. Just like this. This folds out and we see in here we have some wiring and terminal blocks. Some really uh, neat switches here. Here we have two terminal blocks. You can see where the wires were cut. Um, to whatever this box connected to. And it looks like we have another unusual looking terminal block over here. Over here we have a fuse. This is a two amp, 240 volt fuse. Here we have the wires going to the control panel. This one's got a connector on it, this one doesn't. And we have uh, wires going into here, into the other box. Okay, next I'm going to pull out these pins here so we can take this uh, control panel apart. Alright, now let's get all this stuff out of here. Alright, so here's the parts we got. We have three of these terminal blocks, uh, which are really good for projects. Here we have these really cool switches. You can pull it up to disconnect it. This one's a little bit different and they're on these uh, like blocks of uh, I think it's like glass fiber reinforced resin. You kind of see there's fibers in it. Here's the uh, wiring harness here. Here's this other weird terminal block. Alright so if you want to disconnect one of these you unscrew the screw and you slide it up then refasten it down like that so it doesn't make contact here's our little fuse holder these are also uh, good parts to have around all right so let's have a look at what's inside this small box here this one just opens up and it reveals a a uh, medium sized transformer. You can see all the wire connections are all wrapped up into one and there is nothing. These wires aren't used. Here's our transformer. It looks like this transformer has uh, one primary coil and three secondary coils. That's why it has so many wires. Alright now let's actually take the control panel apart. Um, first I'm gonna take off this uh, big steel piece 
All right, I've taken off the screw so we can pull it off. And under here we have a great big circuit board. And we have some power stuff here and some logic processing stuff. And we'll take a closer look at that once I get this board off. You can see on the back side we have these long gold plated pins here that connect this main board to these four smaller boards. You can see here there's actually holes drilled uh, into the circuit board so the pins can pass through the board and into the connector underneath. All right, we have a transformer, two smaller transformers, um, some transistors here on their own little heat sinks. We have some capacitors, and over here we have some uh, relays here. So this is all the power circuitry stuff here. Over here we have our logic processing stuff. All these smaller chips here are basically gate arrays. Um, over here we have a 8-bit microcontroller made by Intel. Here we have an EEPROM with the software on it. If you don't know what an EEPROM is, it's basically a erasable, programmable, uh, read-only memory chip. Underneath the sticker here is a clear window where you can see the silicon die inside and when that is exposed to light it actually deletes all the data. And here we have a socketed chip. This is a RAM chip with a massive amount of 2 kilobytes of memory. So we have our microcontroller, we have our RAM, and we have our EEPROM which is basically um, got the, the instructions that this unit needs to operate installed on it. So all three of these chips together make up the brain of this unit. And there's nothing on the back side except those gold pins. Also this, this board here is got a conformal coating on it to protect the board. Here we have this little jumper here where you can change the unit configuration from run to test. Here we have a little connector with a little loop of wire. This is probably for some setting of some sort that can be changed by uh, connecting these two pins. So these three panels here are actually separate modules that can be populated with different little control panels. The middle one's not populated, but the two outer ones are. All right, here's the little module here. This is the voltage reduction module here. We have some nice three pole switches, a push button, and some indicator LEDs. You can see they've added these nice little metal brackets around the switches here. So the stress of flipping the switch isn't directly put on the pins of the switch because they eventually might break. We have some transistors here. We have another socketed chip here. I don't think it's a EEPROM though. All right, let's take this other module out and take a look at it. We have a on and off switch. This is the first house protection circuit status with set points. Some LED indicator lights here. Okay, here's the board. We have another socketed chip that has its own unique label on it. You can see these two boards here are pretty similar and they have similar components and component layouts. Um, they both have these uh, custom chips here. Uh, these are probably specifically made for the task of this board and its configuration. You can see this board here is revision number three. This one over here is the fifth revision of this board. Okay, now I'm going to take off this board so we can see what's on it. Okay, here's the board. We have our LCD panel here. And we have lots of switches and LEDs as usual. Over here we have this little push button switch. And we have an array of dip switches. This little component here is a resistor array. And we have some more basic logic chips. We have another one of those custom socketed chips. We have our LCD up here, and this LCD is actually socketed. And here's our LCD 
controller chip and you can see there's this strange device on the back of this LCD. This device is actually a small heating element. This is because the LCD won't work right if it's below freezing. You can see this board here is apparently made by General Electric and this is the fourth revision of this board. Okay, now we can take off this last board. Okay, so these connectors actually have a long screw on them. It goes all the way through here and it uses this special nut here with this extra little flange on it and it screws on and holds it on. In between the board and the aluminum case were these rubber insulators to keep it from making contact with the grounded metal. Alright, here's the board. Here we have a nice red metal oxide varistor. This is used kind of like a fuse to protect circuitry. Here we have two more connectors with these little loops of wire on it, probably to set up the unit's configuration. Here's our main connector here. And we have the connector that goes to our fuse holders, and we have another connector here that goes to this hour counter. This board here is for Vision 3.2. The last thing I want to look at here is this hour counter, and there's two screws holding it on here. Okay guys, so I figured out how to take this counter apart. There is a little plastic pin going through the plastic case and into the metal frame inside that was holding it up closed. So here's what we have inside. We have a solenoid and a little lever and arm here. Goes up to the front and some gears that connect different wheels. So when this solenoid actuates, it creates a magnetic field and it pulls this piece of metal towards it. When this closes, it actuates this little plastic arm here. When it goes up to 9, it actuates the next one too. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to help support my channel.